My dream had become reality. I was heading towards Nagoya, Japan, my mother's hometown, to begin my journey, a little nervous but excited at the same time. Aside from the basic questions of will I make friends, will I have enough money, what am I going to do about food, my biggest question coming into this study abroad program was is it possible for me to fit in? Being half Japanese with a decent enough knowledge of Japanese language and culture, could I fit in? I arrived at the familiar Nagoya Centra airport, but everything looked and felt different going at it alone without my mother by my side. I had never felt so free in my life. Thus began my adventure. I met people from all over the world Korea, Germany, France, Thailand, Australia, China, and of course the Japanese students at Nagoya University. We clicked immediately and traveled and ate our way through Japan. We toured Nagoya City and its outskirts to the malls and many delicious restaurants. We traveled to the ancient city of Kyoto, falling back in time among the elegant shrines and temples, to the modern metropolis of Tokyo, careful to hang on to each other so as to not get lost, and all the way to the quiet countrysides of Kobe and Hiroshima, admiring nature in all its beauty. But on March 11, 2011, disaster struck, interrupting our adventures and devastating Japan. I had just walked out of the movie, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Creator, when the whole building shook and swayed. A calm voice came over the intercom, stating there had been an earthquake. The building was stable, but we had to be careful not to walk under swaying ceiling lamps and shelves in case of aftershocks. I returned to where I had been staying and clicked on the TV. I was confused by the chaos on the screen. Was it more than just an earthquake? News anchors speaking quickly and seriously, the scenes of a gigantic tsunami enveloping a city, buildings shaking, trains stopping. This was serious. I headed over to my grandparents' house in Nagoya, and the news continued to flow nonstop. At 3 a.m., the study abroad office called asking about my safety. Tons of Facebook posts asked the same. The chaos got worse as days went by, and more details came about people directly affected and the meltdown of the nuclear power plant. The students studying abroad in Tokyo were forced to return to Minnesota, but I had a choice. I had 24 hours to decide to leave or stay. If I left, I would be refunded my spring tuition, but it was too late to sign up for spring classes, which would leave me sitting around doing nothing for the rest of the semester. But if I stayed and the situation worsened to the point where I was forced to return home, no refund and no classes. I sought advice from my parents, grandparents, friends, and family, some saying to return and others saying to stay. I was torn. Then I spoke with my uncle, my mother's brother, in Ohio, and his advice stuck with me. He said he would never want to live his life with regret. He asked if I returned, would I regret it? I thought about it, and yes, I would have. How could I leave the country that was basically my second home? I felt the pain of all the Japanese. I cried along with those who lost their homes and family. I felt the fear of the creeping nuclear particles. I had to stay. This was part of me, half of who I was. I was glad I stayed. If I had not, I would not have developed such a closeness to my grandparents. We traveled south in a way to escape any nuclear danger and experienced the beauty of natural hot springs in Beppu, the beautiful lands and castles throughout Kyushu, and the island of Shikoku. I also would never have built the close relationships with the remaining international students and Japanese students. We were all going through the same struggle and understood each other completely. We worked through it together. We traveled, partied, ate, laughed, loved, as if there were no tomorrow. This experience, the good and the bad, is something that will always connect us. I regret nothing. <laughs>